Zoax.net. Lesson 9. Tables. Tables give us a way of formatting complex data to make it more visually understandable. The table element is complex, and we will only cover the basic kinds of tables in this lesson. The rest will come later. Our first example of a table contains just names and phone numbers. In fact, our table has only one entry. In the HTML for this table, we have an outer table element which contains all of the table information. Inside, each row of the table is contained inside a TR or table row element. So we see that this table contains two rows. The first row is a set of headers that describe what data is in the table. Table header elements are indicated by TH tags. The two table header elements indicate that each row will contain a name and a phone number. Typically, each subsequent row of the table will hold data that is described by the headers in the first row. In the second row, we have a name and a phone number, each inside a TD element. The TD element stands for table data. If we want to add another name and phone number to our table, we would follow this format. Namely, we would add a row element with two table data elements inside it containing the new name and phone number. We could do this as much as we would like. However, for simplicity, this table only has two rows. Opening our document, we see our table with two rows in it. Notice that the top row, which contains our headers, is rendered in bold, while the bottom row of data is not. What is not so clear in this example is that the headers are centered and the data is not. This will be clear in later examples. This is how tables are rendered by default. Here's another example of a table that has a few more rows in it. Again, there are only two columns in the table. The first row contains the headings Sacrament and Classification. Below that, we have three rows of data in the table. Opening this document, we see our table with four rows in it. The top row is in bold and centered because they are headings. The bottom three rows are data, so they are in normal text and left justified. Our next example extends the last example. This table has three columns and eight rows. The third column has been added here to extend the information in the table. Additionally, there are four new rows. Opening the document, we see our extended table. Here we see more clearly that the headers are centered and the data is not. In our last example, we demonstrate that headers can be used anywhere in the table. In this example, we create a small multiplication table. Ordinarily, we would include numbers up to 9, but I wanted to keep the table small. Notice that we have headers at the beginning of each row, so the headers are across the top row and the left column. This is appropriate for a multiplication table. The inner data cells contain the products of the top and left entries. The upper left header is not essential, but it is used to define the operation in this case. Opening this document, we see a small 3 by 3 table of the products of the headers on the left side and top. This demonstrates a little of the flexibility of tables, but there is still much more about tables that we have yet to discuss. Table elements are a bit strange. To understand how they are interpreted inside a page, I have taken our first example and inserted letters between each of the elements. I put them at the beginning of the line so that they are more visible but it doesn't matter where in the line we put them. Opening this document, we see that all the letters that are within the table are put before the table. This is what happens to content that is not in a heading or a data element. This also shows that the table is a block element. 